Well, here are some of the things that um, I used in the bookcase build. So I thought I'd lay them all out so that you can you can see them. Um, this is the glue that I chose to use. It's um, super, super, super strong. And I got it at Hobby Lobby. And if I can find it at Amazon, I will um, link it in the um, supplies below in case you don't have a Hobby Lobby or, you know, somewhere else you can get this. But it's called Weld Bond. And it it's like super thick PVA glue, but it, it dries um, clear. It's... <laughs> lovely and it and it tacks really fast so you don't have to sit there and hold it forever it dries a lot faster than PVA I also have some painters tape that I use to kind of keep hold things together sandpaper is going to be your best friend um, fine grit coarse grit um, I used like 240 400 and I probably even have a scrap of 80 grit around here too, real coarse stuff. For um, the cabinet itself, I ended up using the basswood, hobby wood, and um, I used planks, and what I did was I just cut down the planks for um, the big pieces on the cabinet. You keep using the horn. I don't think it means what you think it means. Uh, let's see, I think I got a six, I don't, this is about what I have left. <laughs> I think the biggest piece I got was six inches wide by two feet long. And then I cut that down for the major pieces. But then for the trim work, you absolutely can take these and try to slice down trim. But um, I've never had very good um, success at keeping them straight because it'll follow the grain and and when you're trying to get something that's you know like you know skinny like this it's like it's nearly impossible to get it straight and th this stuff is cheap super super cheap so this is a eighth inch yeah this is an eighth inch wide and like a sixteenth of an inch deep so I mean we're talking super skinny um, but it comes in handy. This one is, this one is an eighth inch, um, like square little cube trim. It's perfectly square all the way around. This one, oh, this one is a quarter inch cube, like this, just bigger. And then this one is like this, but just bigger. This one is um, a quarter inch in width. And then I also had, which I forgot to get out, this this is the um, the half inch trim and it's I think all of these are a sixteenth um, do it this way so you can you know you could read it in the right the right direction there we go so a sixteenth by half inch wide and they come in these two foot lengths and there were three in here for. $2.99, but you know, with a coupon, I got these at Hobby Lobby with a coupon, they're you know, negligible. So, so I, suge I suggest that you buy some little teeny tiny pieces for trim. You don't have to, you don't even have to do trim. You can even go to the dollhouse section, you know, where the um, I know at Hobby Lobby and um, Joann's, there's like places where you can get little miniature carved trim where they actually did like baseboards and stuff. It's kind of pricey and I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do on the bookcase because I it kind of evolves as I as I build it. Um, I didn't want to get locked into a certain size or shape of trim and then not not even end up using it. So that's why I got these pieces so that I could build um, build them up to be what I wanted them to be. So that is that. Um, you can use chipboard um, because I did use, like this is the back of a notebook, I did use some heavy chipboard in some places. Um, you can make the whole thing out of chipboard if you want. So, you know, be mindful that you can just do that. Or maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe the you want to make a couple and the first one you, you're like, I, I don't want to use wood on the first one. I'm just going to use chipboard and do a mock-up. 
You know, if you want to do a practice one and make it out of chipboard too, that is always a great idea. Just, you know, save the uh, heavier, heavier pieces from the back of notebooks and, you know. All right, and for cutting tools, I used some little, like, nippers. These are, um, like, floral nippers. And I have, like, some, uh, well, these are wire nippers, and these are, like, floral stem little snippies. Um, craft knife, some scissors, because some of this stuff, this little skinny stuff, you can just cut it with scissors. And a paintbrush, because that's what I, that's what I use mostly for the glue. Um, a ruler. I got... Um, I also use a square. It kind of helps to, you know, keep things square. And clamps. Little tiny clamps. Okay, I think that's it. I think. We're gonna, we're just gonna leave it at that. And, uh, we'll move along to putting this thing together. So I'm gonna start out by cutting my pieces. And I did not plan ahead of time, but I did draw out the size that I that I was going to need for like space between shelves. I knew that I wanted my bookcase to be at least nine inches tall and about five or so inches wide. So that's kind of my base plan. So here are the um, some of the main pieces after they have been cut out. And I will be putting just this main box together for the bookcase. I'm going to use the top of a box and you can use a shoe box or anything you got. And this will help if you are putting sides together on the back of this bookcase. It helps keep it square. And I'm just gonna put a little glue on the edge where it's going to meet the back piece. This is the, one of the sides. And I'm going to snug that up against the corner of the box and use some painter's tape to keep that steady while it finishes um, the glue drying. And I am measuring kind of how much space I wanted between the shelves. That's what I was doing. So here are the shelves and I'm going to be attaching, go ahead and attach those, get those in the middle and get those ready to rock and roll so I can put the other side on. And of course the other side will help keep everything square and even, but you can use a little level if you want as well to help keep everything square. I measured and I made a straight line, as you can see. <laughs> I made a straight line so it, it helped me to have that guideline. So I'm gonna glue on this other shelf and you want enough glue, but you don't want too much to where it's gouging out everywhere. And I'm just cleaning it up a little bit. Or a lot. <laughs> Keep messing with it. <laughs> And there I'm just checking the spacing, make sure I was I was good. And here is the other side. And I noticed that one of the shelves was a little longer than the other. So I just sanded it down until it was even. And now I'm applying glue to the sides of those shelves, those ends. And then also to the edge of the sideboard. And I'm just going to attach that like like so and such and so forth. Make sure it's even top to bottom with that back big backboard. And here I am taking some of the glue on the paintbrush. And I like to paint the glue where there's maybe some gaps. The wood is not going to be perfectly, perfectly straight. I don't care. I don't care who you are. It is not going to be straight. So I'm just painting some glue to kind of fill in some of those gaps so that I am assured that there is a, a really good bond between those seams. And painting that in with a little tiny uh, paintbrush uh, worked really well for me. And since the glue dries clear, and I'm going to be painting the bookcase, 
um, it doesn't really matter, you know. If you're going to be staining your bookcase, I would highly suggest staining all the pieces after you cut them, but before you glue them together. If you're going to paint, you can paint afterwards. If you're going to decoupage, you can decoupage afterwards. But if you're going to stain, you better do it first because you can't stain over glue. It won't work. So, and this is taking me forever. I realize, I realize that this is taking me forever. <laughs> um, I still don't know what color of paint. I haven't finished quite yet. Um, the bookcase is finished. I just haven't painted it yet. I have a, I have an idea in my head, but I keep vacillating back and forth and thinking, do I want to go dark? Do I want to go light? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It'll be a surprise to you and to me. I should have cut this down. Yep. Okay. Finally. Now I'm going to tape these together, the sides to the back, and I kind of firmly hold them together while I tape them. And then this allows them to dry in their shape so that if they look like they're trying to pull apart, they won't because you got, you got it all taped together. And this is later after it has dried. And this is that little skinny uh, cube, one eighth of cube little trim. And I'm going to cut four little shelf supports. So they're going to be the same depth as the shelves. So I'm just going to cut four of those to put two under each shelf on either side. And I will be gluing those in. There, I'm searching for my, yeah. I'm like, am I going to use nippers? I use nippers and then I use a craft knife and I use any, whatever you do, you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to sand the edges regardless because the nippers leave little, little like pieces sticking out. And sometimes the craft knife even does the same thing. So like I said, sandpaper is your best friend. So whatever you do, sand the edges and make sure everything is nice and smooth. And there she be. And I only show me gluing in the first one, but all four go in the exact same way. And that's how they will be underneath, either side, left and right. <laughs> 